What's up guys, Sal here. So despite all the rumors, Samsung has finally made the Exynos 2200 with AMD GPU official today. The chipset comes with some industry first hardware features that will surely enhance the gaming experience. But before that, let's talk about some updates on the Galaxy S22. First up, all the S22 handsets will have a new Gorilla Glass Victus Plus protection. This will be 12.5% stronger than the Gorilla Glass Victus on the S21 Ultra. In case you've missed it, the base S22 will also have a glass bag this time instead of plastic. On the S22 Ultra specifically, the aluminum frame, which Samsung will call Armor Aluminum, will be 10% stronger than the one on the S21 Ultra. Next, there was a rumor that Samsung will make a 1TB variant of the S22 Ultra, but it looks like it will be released in select regions only. We don't know what those regions are, but Europe is definitely one of them. Moving on, the S22 Ultra, just like its predecessors, will be able to take beautiful photos of the moon, courtesy of the 100x zoom camera. But the moon photos taken with the S22 Ultra will be a little different. Specifically, the tone will match the updated guidelines from NASA. Now the tone will look a little more on the cooler side. Just to be clear, these photos are not taken with the S22 Ultra, they're just to give you an idea how the color calibration will look on the handset. Now coming back to the Exynos 2200, three years after announcing the partnership, Samsung has finally included the AMD GPU into their chipsets. But they're not calling it the AMD GPU, instead it will be called Xclips 920 GPU that's based on the RDNA2 architecture. Surprisingly, it wasn't a dedicated event but just a press release. It's a 4 nanometer chipset and just like the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, they are using the same cluster of ARM V9 cores headlined by the Prime X2 core. But weirdly, Samsung neither mentioned the frequency of the cores nor did they say anything about the performance increase year over year. But thankfully, we have some leaked benchmarks which give us an idea of how it compares to the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. I'll talk about that in a moment, but first, let's take a look at the features of the AMD GPU. The first one is the hardware accelerated ray tracing, making it the first mobile chipset to support this technology. Ray tracing is a method of graphics rendering that simulates the physical behavior of light. It was only seen on gaming consoles so far, so the fact that the Exynos 2200 has hardware ready to take advantage of this technology is a very big thing. The second is variable ray shading, something the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 also supports. It basically allows game developers to render important visuals within the game at a higher quality and in turn render less important graphics like the background in groups of multiple pixels. This will result in better frame rates and better efficiency meaning good battery life. The artificial intelligence is seeing a big upgrade with this chipset. Samsung claims a massive 200% increase in AI performance compared to the Exynos 2100. It means that apps that use AI, including computational photography, will work better and more reliably. The image signal processor hasn't changed much compared to its predecessor, it's now just a tad better. Now coming to the benchmarks, here are the Geekbench scores that measure the CPU capability. It's on par with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, with the latter being a tad better due to higher frequency cores, but it's not something you'd notice even if you keep both these devices side by side. On a Tutu, which measures both CPU and GPU, the scores are again on par with the Snapdragon counterpart, which is a great thing. But if we talk about the GPU specifically, then we start seeing some differences. On GFX Bench under AZ Tech Normal Test, it scores 109 frames per second, which is significantly more than the 71 FPS we got with the Exynos variant of the S21 Ultra, so a 38 FPS performance boost isn't something to sneeze at. But the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 scored 139 FPS on the same test, which is also significantly more than the Exynos 2200. But I think we should wait for the final unit because these are engineering samples and the scores could vary. But even if we end up seeing the same scores, it's gonna be hard for you to notice these changes in real life because both these GPUs are now so much powerful. The only question now remains is how efficient they are and how much heat they generate. I guess we'll know soon enough on 8th of February. Of course, do consider subscribing for all the latest updates on the S22. And as always, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace out.